everyone, and welcome to the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast. This is episode 64, and if this is your first time here, this is a podcast about crafting, about making all the things, and celebrating with you why crafting every day makes for the best day ever. My name is Trisha, and I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Tie-Dye Diva. You can also find me in my sticker and stationery shop, which is the fibertree.com. Uh, show notes for this and previous episodes can be found in the Ravelry group, and I will be sure to link to all the places in the description box below. So, uh, welcome back, and if this is your very first time here, an extra special welcome to you. So, in today's episode, uh, we are going to, or I'm going to share with you um, some fi eight, one finished object in knitting. Uh, I got some whips in knitting and crochet and um, a couple of sewing whips, a little bit of progress on, on my sewing projects. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some paper crafts I've been working and uh, having a lot of fun with. Um, acquisitions, of course. And then we will go into what's around the corner. We haven't... Um, talked about what's around the corner um, in quite some time because quite frankly there hasn't been a lot going on with COVID but now that things are starting to open up and some of us are returning to slowly I should say returning into no a little bit of normalcy um, there are a couple of events that I want to talk about so before I get into the making um, a little bit of admin is that if you want a prize for the previous make-alongs, they have all gone in the mail. So you should be receiving those very soon if you have not already. Our uh, year of hats, the November, I'm sorry, the October hat is in full effect. So you've got a couple of more days to finish your October hat. And I will be inserting a new thread for the November hat. Let's see what else. So our current make along is finishing our whips. So no matter if it was a sewing project, um, whatever, whatever you want to finish, knitting, crochet, something for the home, if it's crafty, then it qualifies. So, um, so many of you have already posted in the Ravelry group. I was just looking this morning and was quite inspired by all of the things that you're doing. So thank you so much for your participation. It's really, really exciting to see um, all of the beautiful things being made. And then that means that in, the, in January, we can start the year fresh. So how exciting is that? So let's get into the making, shall we? Um, I have a finished object. I finished my Autumn Cozy Cowl. This took much longer than I had anticipated, but it was totally, totally worth the wait. So here it is. Again, this is the Autumn Cozy Cow. And as you can see, it just goes on and on and on and on. This is a pattern by Tiff Nealon, um, and I was, this was supposed to be, a, well, it was a test knit for her, although I did not finish in time um, for when it was released, which was last week. I actually finished this past weekend. So let me try this on. I'm going to take off this cow, which is the Jessica Jones cow. I put this on today because winter, oh, I should say late fall is in full effect in the Washington DC area. It is so chilly and rainy and windy and just really bitter today. And I was feeling a bit chilly. So I just decided to put on this lightweight Jessica Jones cow. I talked about this in a previous podcast and I will link to it in the show notes. So back to the Autumn Cozy. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to find the back of it because it, Let's see here. I guess it doesn't. It's so big. It's hard to hard to find. Hard to find the back. So. 
So, I think I mentioned on the last episode that it's so long and cozy because what happens when you put it on is all of that funnel just drapes so beautifully around the neck. And then it seems like it's like super long. I'm looking under my feet because sometimes cashmere likes to cashmere my cat likes to sit right under my chair and I'm so afraid one day I'm going to roll over him. So I'm going to stand up so you can see this. So again, the long funnel really drapes beautifully over the neck and chest and then you've got this portion here that hits at least on me like right at the top. Well, I guess you say right under the bust line. So you can imagine this is super cozy. It's going to be super warm on a day that's that's chilly, but not too bad. Even, even on a day like today, I might be able to go outside with this on a long sleeve tee and a denim jacket and I would probably be okay. Oh, and a hat. But I just absolutely love this. Um, this looks like brioche, but it's not. It's actually called a modified uh, fisherman's rib. This ribbing here in this section here, she uh, calls a modified garter stitch. The yarn I use is Chelsea Lux DK. The golden color is sunflower and the contrast speckled is called leopard. And it's just an absolute beautiful combination of pattern and yarn. So highly, highly recommend this pattern. Um, it was so fun to make, very easy, very simple. A little bit more on the construction. At one, at the beginning of the cow, you're knitting back and forth, and then you do join in the round at some point and knit the remainder. So it's just, just such a beautiful, well thought out pattern, and I'm just so I'm going to get a lot of use out of this this winter, I'm sure. So, um, so that's those are it. That's it for the finished object so let's get into the things i'm actually working on i have a new whip since we last chatted and it's actually in crochet so this past weekend i had the uh, most amazing experience to go and do some yarn crawling with a uh, couple of girlfriends a few girlfriends um it was three of us actually and so we um two days of yarn crawling. We started in uh, Virginia on my end and we toured a, about for the three or four yarn shops. Um, the furthest was in Haymarket, Virginia. Beautiful yarn shop called Needles in the Haymarket. And then we made our way closer into the Washington DC area and toured a couple of other places. The following day, um, we started on the other side of Maryland in the Baltimore area. And we drove up to Pennsylvania to, um, we got to see two beautiful yarn shops in Pennsylvania. And the, the shop that just really blew me away was called Knitter's Edge. So friendly, so accommodating, an absolutely gorgeous shop. If I have a couple of pictures, which I think I do, I'll insert them here. They were lovely enough to um, gift us this really nice uh, little tote bag that I'm, I'm currently using as my project bag for the project I'm about to show you. And one of the things I picked up from that yarn shop, the Knitter's Edge, was this beautiful skein. It is a worsted weight acrylic and it is by I am hesitating because I don't know where my ball band is. I'm going to insert it right here, the name of this yarn. But basically, it is an acrylic uh, worsted weight 
when I saw it, I just fell in love with the colors. I just really got in there and opened it up and was just blown away by how many variations of color was in this skein. It looks a lot like Noro, um, but it, of course, because it's acrylic, had a much better price point than Noro yarns. Um, and I don't work with acrylic a lot, but if there is such a thing as a premium acrylic, then this would fall in that category. It looks like wool. It feels like wool. It doesn't feel plasticky and sticky when you're working with it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I think it was about 12 bucks for over 500 skeins of worsted weight. So I decided to start this project, which is called the Cake Yarn Show. So my goal in crochet is to always have a crochet project going because um, I really need to work on my crochet skills. Um, you can see this is not perfect. Hopefully I'll be able to block this out and get some of that, that unevenness of the edge, which is my biggest challenge in crochet. So if you guys have any suggestions on how to work on that, I guess it's just keep working at it, right? Just trial and error. The more you work at it, the better you'll get. At least that's the hope. This um, is just a two row repeat um, of a pattern. It's a lot of open work and um, double crochet. And it's just really, really simple to follow. But look at these colors. And I'm looking forward to seeing what other color combinations are in this ball of yarn. Again, this is the Cake Yarn Shawl. And um, I will definitely link to it. I believe it is a free pattern. So, very excited about that. Next up are whips. You have already said, no, actually I do have another whip since the last time we chatted. <laughs> I cast on for another sweater. Um, I gave in to peer pressure because my good friend Tasha started a Millie and hers was so beautiful. Actually, she finished a Millie and cast on for another Millie sweater and I just absolutely fell in love with hers. And so it really wasn't peer pressure. I just, I'm, I'm in a cast on, wanting to cast on all the things mood. So when I saw how beautiful hers was, I decided to knit one as well. I've already knitted this pattern before, but the yarn combination that Tasha used really had me thinking that I would love one just like hers. So here is the progress I've made thus far. So Millie is a pattern by the ladies of Nice and Knit. Um, I checked on their website. They I, they were dyeing yarn and they had a podcast at one point. So I'm not sure what's going on with their yarn, yarn dyeing business or their podcast. But again, this is their pattern. And basically Millie um, tradition is supposed to be knit with a fingering weight yarn. And it's almost like a dolman style sweater um, where the raglan shaping really comes down quite far. And then you separate for the sleeves and then you knit the, the body and then you come back and finish the sleeve. So base, a basic raglan with a twist, I guess you could say. Um, so the what Tasha did and what I copied was using two different types of yarn. So I'm using this beautiful cobblestone, which is a fingering weight, and I'm holding it with uh, a lace weight mohair. So the cobblestone is uh, by Chelsea Lux Yarns. This is her cobblestone base. And you can see it's just this really fun textured yarn. Um, this color is called 80s Radio. And it's got blues and pinks and browns and golds and, and oranges. Just a really fun skein. And then this color is I think this color is called Straw, and this is by Plume, P-L-U-M-E, yarns. Um, so these two held together, make this. I cast on my neck with 
a darker color mohair, two strands held together, which is this color right here. So this is a Knit Picks Aloft. So if you're looking, if you want to experiment with mohair, but you don't want to invest a lot of money, um, this, this, a, this loft, I said a loft, that's the name of a hotel, right? Loft by Knit Picks is a good option. Uh, let's see. And my plan, what I think I'm going to do, um, yes, what, what I have done is you can see in the, um, the ribbing of the neckline, it's a little bit more golden. So that mohair, the mohair that I held to get that effect was this color here. And if you'll remember this, this is from my, the, the tea sweater that I just finished. What's the name of the pattern? I'm drawing a blank, but this color is from uh, Legacy Fiber Arts. So I had this left over. So I just, I'm just trying to use up uh, leftover skeins of yarn, and then I will mimic this on the cuff of the sleeve as well as on the bottom. So that's the plan for now. Really, really enjoying this. This combination of this cobblestone and mohair lace is just so amazing to work with so highly highly recommend giving this 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 nubby highly textured cobblestone a try if you haven't already so let me get this back in its bag i feel like when i after i finished podcasting sometimes it looks like a bomb went off in my craft room <laughs> i've got stuff everywhere so i'm really trying to be a little bit more orderly so make sure I get this back in the bag and this this little bag it's a little a tote that I made some time ago from um, a tutorial that is in the Mimi G Sew It Academy this is like the third or fourth project in the Sew It Academy the only thing about mohair is you can see sometimes it has a tendency to shed quite a bit so I'll just use my lint roller to get that off but yeah this was a fun little tote project and i think i have a link to the sew it academy um in the rivalry group and i think i also include it in the show notes usually but i'll make sure i do that if there are any folks who want to learn how to sew i think it is an amazing investment it's about 11 dollars a month and she literally takes you through um, the basics of sewing, like how to thread your machine, how to choose a machine, all the way. Um, there's a new lesson every month, and um, you, it, she just slowly guides you through the sewing process. So again, that's the um, the name of the pattern is the railroad railroad tote, and again, it's from the Mimi G Sew It Academy. So the next whip I'm going to share with you really quickly is my progress on my half and half triangles wrap. I really thought I was going to be finished with this, but this, if you've already made this or if you've seen other podcasters who have made it, it's, it's a, it's a bit of a, um, slog. It's a slow project because there's just so much knitting. Um, Basically, it's two triangles of garter stitch, and they are joined together by short row. Um, they're joined together, and the triangles are formed by short rows. So basically, every stitch in this pattern gets a short row wrap. So these are all the stitches that I have left to wrap and turn. So it looks like I'm almost done, but you got to remember, I got to... Once I wrap, I got to go all the way up and then all the way back and wrap the next stitch. So it takes it takes a minute, but my goal is to finish this by Sunday because I really want to enter it into the plucky um, fall make along that they have going on. So um, that is my goal for this weekend to really buckle down and get that done. I've talked about the yarns I use for that in the previous episode. Um, the darker blue is Plucky Feet. 
excuse me, and that color is uh, Bohemian Blue. And the lighter blue is Plucky Primo Fingering, and that color is Blue Blazes. Again, I will link to my uh, Ravelry project pages so you can get more detail on that. And then finally, I believe finally, the only other whip I'm working on, actively working on, is my Socktober sock. Um, Denise, who is uh, better known as Earth Tones Girl, and uh, Marcelin Smith, who is better known as Hey Brownberry, are i um, hosting a um, Socktober sock make along and I wanted to participate in that. And here is my progress on um, my sock, my first sock. Um, I think I want these to be just like footy socks. I haven't quite decided. Um, obviously, I'm not going to finish my second sock by the end of the make along, but I definitely wanted to support the two of them in their make along. And I'm absolutely loving the way this is knitting up. So this is also Plucky Feet. And this color is Don't Go Over Bordeaux. So I thought it was the perfect autumn color with those beautiful pops of pink and rust. It's just a really beautiful skein. And I like the way the color is pooling. I just hope that the next sock does the same thing just had a thought maybe I should just keep knitting 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 this so that I will continue this pattern so that both socks will have that kind of faux self-striping going on what do you think hmm I just might do that so in any event I'll just keep working on these these this just goes in my purse when I'm out and about raise driving and of course <laughs> Or if I have doctor's appointments and I'm just waiting, um, I always pop a pair of socks in my um, purse. And this is hanging out in my Sandy by the Lakeside sock bag. One of my favorites. Okay, so I think I've covered everything that I'm working on in whips. Um, I'm just I'm looking at looking at my show notes. So let's quickly go into sewing. So last time we chatted, I had talked about making a shirt number one, which is a 100 acts of sewing pattern. And I almost finished, but didn't quite didn't quite get there. I've been having quite a bit of back pain, um, and my sewing setup is not the most ergonomic or comfortable. So. I've been kind of waiting for that back pain to subside before I finish this. But as you can see, it's just about done. It's hemmed. The sleeves are hemmed. Um, both sleeves are hemmed. The bottom is hemmed. Uh, there are no exposed edges. On the bottom, I use a zigzag stitch. And then I just hem that under. Um, this um, fabric that I'm using is a cotton flannel like a buffalo check of cotton flannel. So it's it's interesting because it's really warm and cozy, but it's got a little bit of heft to it too. And so when I tried to do like do a double um, hem on this, it just felt like it was a bit too bulky. So I opted to just finish it off with a zigzag stitch and then just do one hem so it wouldn't be so bulky. I also did French seams all throughout. So there are French seams on the side as well as on the shoulder. So again, I just have to, I've pinned in my bias tape binding. So I just have to sew that in and finish that off and I'll be done. I think last time I mentioned I was just going to use a store-bought um, bias tape binding but I remember it I had this left over from another project and I thought it was really it's always nice to have a pop of contrast in these um 100 acts of sewing patterns so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish this this weekend at least that's my goal tomorrow it's supposed to be another day like today maybe even worse it's really windy and wet 
and cold. So I don't have plans to go anywhere. I've already got dinner planned out. Um, it's going to be a stay at home and make and be cozy kind of day. So I definitely hope to get that finished this weekend. Another project that I want to start in sewing, and this is going to take us into acquisitions, is this fabric here that just came in the mail. I saw another, I saw someone on Instagram with this fabric. Um, as you can see, it's a graffiti print, but it's got all these amazing positive affirmations like Bravo, um, love yourself, brave, love. And of course, I love the colors because every color is represented in here. It's You've got pinks and blues and that graffiti print is just, I love it so much. So this came in the mail not too long ago from the Fabric Click Fabric Shop. I will link to their shop. And what I want to make is the Hosta tee. This is a fancy tiger crafts pattern. And I've been wanting to make these for quite some time. Um, I don't even think I've cut this pattern out. Nope, I still have to cut the pattern out or either trace it out onto some tracing paper. But yes, I think this is going to be so amazing. So I'm really looking forward to... Finishing my shirt number one and getting started on my next sewing project. And I hope to have some progress progress done on that the next time I record. So let's talk a little bit about some other acquisitions. Um, the first one, I probably should have talked about this in whips. Well, it's, no, it's not really a whip, but it's going to be a whip soon. Right now, it's just an acquisition. It's a heavy, it's a big it's a big basket of goodness. So I'm giving you a couple of seconds to brace yourself. Brace yourself. Don't say I didn't warn you. Look at that. Look at all of this fibery goodness in here. And there's another beautiful skein of orange that's trying to hide. He's trying to be, she's trying to be shy. Doesn't want to get in the mix. There it is. So this is my acquisition from Knit Collage. So this is a combination of my spring make-along yarn that I never um, got started. I never cast on for my spring make-along sweater. Um, and I also purchased a smaller kit um, to combine with my spring make-along yarn so that I could participate in the Knit Collage Fall Make-Along. I know that's saying a lot. Anywho, I want to make the Kaleidoscope sweater, and I don't know if it's going to be the pullover or the um, cardigan. It will probably be the cardigan, and these are all the beautiful yarns I'm going to use. So this is their Spun Cloud. Let me just pull out one of the white ones. So that's going to be the main color. Oh, look at that. Can you see the sparkle in that? And the that creamy color is going to be uh, striped with all of these amazing, highly textured, super bulky yarns. This is unlike any project I have ever done. So I'm really looking forward to this. Even this yarn here, this is the, uh, this, these fabric strips are the, this is called the, the wildflower yarn. So I will be incorporating some of that. And then um, I've been watching uh, Christina of Chelsea Lux Yarns. She has already gotten started on hers. And she, is in, she included some of her uh, super bulky skeins from Melanated uh Boho, I believe that's her. That's cashmere behind me. Being extra. What are you doing, cashmere? Into all the things. So, um, yes. I'm almost sure. She's Amanda Solomon, 018 on 
Instagram, but I believe that is her company name, Melanated Boho. I will link to her shop. Um, so I will try to also incorporate these as well. So that make along officially starts on Monday, I believe. So that's why I'm kind of glad I'm going to be in this weekend so that I can really make some good progress on my current whip so that I can move on into my kaleidoscope sweater. Next up in acquisitions are a few things I got when I did the yarn crawl. And this is in no order of where we, of how we actually crawled. Um, we did get to go to my local yarn shop and I was so excited to show off my local yarn shop to one of the gals, hey Stephanie, who had never been there before and she was absolutely blown away. It's a beautiful yarn shop. So if you're ever in the area, make sure you get to Fiber Space in Alexandria, Virginia. They have all the things and it's just the most the cutest shop. It's well arranged. It's organized. It's just, it's awesome. So I picked up these two skeins. This is the Gilead uh, yarn everyone is talking about. It's such a beautiful uh, non-superwash base. Just a really nice basic wool, but it's super soft and squishy. And I got two of these in this beautiful pink color called quartz. And I'm going to be making the Mallow Cow, M-A-L-L-O-W. So that's why I got these. I don't know when I'll be able to cast on, maybe middle of next month, but beautiful project um, that's high on my radar. So I hope to get that done. Hope to get that cast on soon. Next up, I picked up this beautiful color of Kelborn Woolen Scout. I kind of feel like the camera is washing this out. It's a much deeper, much deeper color of what, like a wine burgundy-ish color. I got four of these and this is 274 yards each and I believe this is a DK weight. And I got these because I want to make a vest. I want to make the trim vest. I believe that's how you spell it. I mean, you pronounce it T-R-Y-M. So I got four skeins to make that. I'm thinking about hosting a make-along for the beginning of the year, a vest-along. So let me know what you think about that. I've really been thinking about what make-alongs I want to do for next year. Do we want to do make-alongs or do we just want to make with each other and just work it that way let me know what you think and i might even put a thread in if you have some suggestions for um make alongs for 2022 which i can't believe it's almost here crazy right and then um so and this these four skeins of scout this came from needles in the hay market in Haymarket, virginia and this is probably the thing I was most excited about, about um, my acquisitions. I apologize for that, for the crinklies. Something I've always wanted is an Atenti bag. So there is my beautiful new a tinty bag. I have to say it was kind of funny. I, I talked about how beautiful and how amazing that yarn shop was, which was called um, the, the Knitter's Edge in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So we walked in and, and we knew, we knew before we even walked in, it was going to be an amazing store. So we walk in and of course, as knitters, obsessed knitters do, you're just blown away. Your mouth is wide open. And the owner just comes to us and welcomes us and gives us a rundown of how to find what's in the shop, what's where, you know, how they've organized the, 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 um, the shop. And then at the back of the shop, it's just this huge wall of Madeline Tosh. So you don't even know, you don't know where to start. But eventually our eyes, as we're, as we're you know, just looking and taking it all in, our eyes move toward this huge revolving 
span of a tinty bags. And while the owner is still giving us her spiel, we just, just make a beeline <laughs> for the tinty bags. And so afterward, when we got in the car, I said, do you all realize that we just kind of left the lady hanging as she was telling us about the shop? But anyway, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's used to that. Um, but yeah, she had a beautiful selection of Atenti bags. And this is the one I chose. Um, I forgot. Let me see. I don't know if it's. So this is called a Tall Caddy. And this print is the Toucan. Toucan print. Again, the Tall Caddy from Atenti. Lots of pockets. Um, even on the inside, there are one, two, three. There are four pockets on the inside. It's lined. It's doubly lined with a beautiful canvas. You can hear how heavy that canvas is. And guys, check this other lining out. <sighs> can you even stand it? <laughs> I got to figure out what project is going to go in here because it's going to be really special. I love bags of this style because I would even take this out and about to the grocery store or wherever, throw a knitting project in there along with my wallet and maybe one of my planners or a notepad and I'm good to go. So thank you Knitter's Edge for my very first Atenti bag. So excited about that. Now, the other thing I want to share with you um, has to do with paper crafting. So that will take us right on into paper crafting. Um, I've been having a really good time still with art journaling. And um, I'll, it, I'll probably put a few pictures of some of the art journaling spreads I've done at the beginning of the podcast. Um, you know, the, the picture collage that rolls before the show starts. Um, so you'll see some of the pages I've been doing. Um, and I decided to pick up some Distress Ink from Joann's. So this is by Ranger. And I love these because it, it just gives you that vintage Distress look. I've been using it like on the edges of papers. I've been using it on the edges of dollies and on tags and things. Um... And I just get that effect using this dauber here. And I've got several of these that come right off, depending on what um, color I'm using. This beautiful blue here is called Peacock Feathers. So, yeah, I got quite a few of the, have picked up quite a few of these colors. My favorite so far has just been this vintage photo, which is this, this, looks like it's dark um but when you put it on the paper it just again just gives you that just just that slight bit of color so you could take a modern piece of paper like this here and you can just you know daub it up ink it up and make it look like it's a piece of vintage paper which is really cool just gives you a nice effect in your journal spreads so like I said, I picked up quite a few of those and I'm kind of overdue for posting a uh, art journal with me video. So hopefully I'll be able to get one of those up pretty soon. Also in paper art, I have been looking for some stencils. Um, you can find stencils anywhere, but what I've been looking for are just some very basic things. Basic shapes, not necessarily of flowers or birds or anything, just some basic geometric shapes, but I haven't been able to find those. So I decided to make my own um, in Cricut Design Space. So Cricut had some stenciling uh, images. And what I did was I found the heaviest cardstock I had in my paper stash and I cut those out. So this, it's actually like an animal print, if you can kind of see that. So again, I would just ink this up with a Distress ink or maybe even watercolor or um, some other medium to get that effect. Here's another one, a geometric look. Again, this isn't like a plastic. Um, it's a heavy cardstock. So I put this little orange 
spot here so that I can make sure that when I use these, I'm always using the same side. This one here is just a very basic circles um, with some cutouts. Really love this one. And then this might be my favorite, the animal print. So yes, I would definitely be using um, all of these in some upcoming art journaling spreads um, that I've been having such a good time with. Um, so... Do we have any other art journalers who are viewers? I would love to know. Finally, a couple of weeks ago, um, speaking about, you know, getting out and about and kind of returning to a bit of normalcy, I was able to go over to one of my best friend's home and spend the entire afternoon, afternoon with her crafting. So we did some art journaling. We did a lot of giggling and talking and sipping wine and sampling tequila. And um, But surprisingly, we were quite productive despite all that. <laughs> so it was really, really nice. And one of the things we worked on were some greeting cards. So this is one of the cards I created. I basically um, created all of these just different size cutouts and I cut them out on the Cricut machine and I used a, um, what do you call that, adhesive tape that's got some dimension to it so that the, it would look like the circles are like popping off of the page. And uh, I took a sticker from one of my Happy Planner stickers. I believe this one says, always take the scenic route. So this was super fun and super easy to make. Love, love, love this. And then here's another one. Again, I cut uh, the circles out on the Cricut machine and then I just attached them using the adhesive dots. This one can either go vertically or horizontally. So I've had these card blanks in my stash for quite some time. Now I just need to figure out the proper size envelope for them. These would be wonderful to give as gifts to folks. So definitely look forward to making some more um, greeting cards. That was a lot of fun. So let's wrap up with what's around the corner. Frederick Fiber Fest is November 6th and 7th next weekend. For reference, today is Friday, October 29th. And then the following weekend, November 13th and 14th, is the Maryland Alpaca and Fleece Festival. Vogue Knitting Live uh, will not be taking place in person. Um, it is still virtual, so definitely um, check that out. Maryland Sheep and Wool will be an in-person event. Um, as a matter of fact, they have a theme back together again, which is super exciting. And that will be May 7th and 8th. I do plan on going to the Maryland uh, Fiber Fest next weekend. I'm still undecided about the uh, Alpaca and Fleece Festival. It depends on how I'm feeling, um, what the weather is. The last time I went, it was super cold. Um, and I just got to be really careful about just how much energy I extend. Because um, I don't want to, you know, set myself back and end up in a flare or... So we'll see. We'll just see how do I have energy to go and what's the weather going to be like if I can tolerate the weather. Um, Merlin, sheep and wool, rain, sleet, so, snow or shine, I plan on being there. And I hope to see some of you there too. So I think that covers everything for today. I was thinking today was going to be a short episode, but it didn't turn out that way, which is fine. So I hope you enjoyed everything I had to share with you today. I'm trying to be on a roll, being here every two weeks. So, um, Let's see how that goes. Keep making, um, keep finding joy in your making, continue to stay safe and well, and I will see you again on the next episode. Bye. Mm -hmm.